Great race at all. All right, Bob, why don't you run down then the remaining 12 cars for this International Freedom Festival 100. Qualifying in the first heat, Joe Rizok in car number 12 has a Monte Carlo. The car bearing the 99 number here, Jack Copeman from London, is a Monte Carlo as well. He'll be number 89 in the race. Car 36, Eugene Huckster from Chatham, has an Monte Carlo in the field. And car number nine, Jim Taggart, made the field, but later engine problems sidelined his Thunderbird. Vic, in the second heat, car number 21, Rob Young from Windsor, put his Thunderbird in the field. Car number 20, Ray Hebert, a Lincoln, is also from Windsor. 04, Andy Farr from Sterling Heights, Michigan, has a Camaro running today. And car number 90, Larry LeMay from Mount Clemens, Michigan, qualified in the second heat in a Thunderbird. In the last chance race, the last chance for the drivers to make it in the show, car number 44, Al Hebert, won the event. He's from Windsor, driving a Monte Carlo. Car 62, Kurt Dickey, also from Windsor and also in a Monte Carlo, made the show. Car number 10, Windsorite Bob LeClaire put his Thunderbird in the field. And car 57, Jamie Thurlby from LaSalle, has his Monte Carlo at the back of the pack. Car number 3, Gord DeWale from Ridgetown, Ontario, has his Camaro in because of the engine problems experienced by car number 9. At any race, whether it be Formula One, NASCAR, or here at the checker flag in Windsor, there is always one man who is in total control, and that is the man who carries the flag, drops the green to go, and drops the checker to the winner. And here at checker flag, that man is race director John McLean, and he is standing by in the pits with Frank Salee. John, first of all, we want to ask you about the aspects of the yellow flag and the black flag. First of all, the yellow. Well, the yellow flag we use for caution if there's some accident on the track, uh... If we feel that someone's in danger out there, if we just want to clean up a spill that's on the track, be it oil, be it water, antifreeze, anything like that, we throw the caution lap out, the caution flag out, and then we'll run some caution laps. They will not count in the 100-lap race today. We're going to give the fans 100 laps of racing today. There'll be no laps counted under the caution flag whatsoever. Now, as for the rules of the game, what constitutes the throwing of the black flag. What does the black flag mean? Well, the black flag, a lot of people think the black flag is just get off the racetrack and put it on the trailer. That's really not truth. Truth in point is that the black flag is used basically, the terminology is go to the pits for consultation. And it may be because you're leaking oil. It may be because uh, I don't know why you're smoking. Maybe it's a tire. It, possibly uh, you're leaking water. It may be because of rough driving. If that's the case, very realistically, you will be on the trailer. So the man in control, John McLean, is ready. The field is ready. I think we're going to have a good first look at this sportsman class. Yes, it's going to be exciting. We've got cars from, as we said earlier, all over Canada and the United States here for this one. In our regular racing programs at Checker Flag, we've had seven different feature winners in nine events. That's unheard of. That should set the scene for the competition that we'll see here today. The field is ready. We're ready as well. I hope you are. When we come back, it will be the green flag for this 1986 Bolson Canadian International Freedom Festival 100 here on TSN. Of the drivers. The realities of short track motor racing dictate that being near the front of the pack is vitally important, more so than in many other forms of auto racing. Don Malott has been one of the top runners here at Windsor's Checker Flag Motor Speedway since late in the 1960s decade. And Don, what about the aspect of qualifying near the front and running near the front? Well, you want to qualify near the front so you can stay away from any kind of trouble that's going to happen. And uh, staying up there, staying out of trouble, that's what it's all about, I guess. What about the aspect of lasting 100 laps? You have no chance to win unless you're there for the 100th lap. Does that weigh in your strategy as far as the earlier laps of the race? Well, at the beginning of the race, you don't want to wear your tires out, obviously. Uh, if the car is handling well and you're not abusing any tires, usually you can run away and hide, hopefully. Uh, if I can't, uh, just have to wait till the end and wait, wait for the other guys to wear their tires out. When a long race, that's the main thing, is to make the car be there at the end. If you're not handling, save your tires to the end as much as you can, like A, and let the other guys blow or crash or whatever the case may be. 
it's going to be a competitive field today, so we ourselves just want to be there at the end. We may not be the fastest at the start, but we want to be there at the end. Now, for those uninitiated to the short track stock car racing realities, you're not going through a gearbox during a race lap, but still explain to us how it's so much more than simply going around in a circle. Well, our cars are geared for the size track that we run, and we don't shift, like you say. The only time we shift is when we're on a caution flag or when we first start out. Uh, the main thing is you don't want your tires breaking loose. So you get your car geared to the point where you get the most horsepower and optimum performance out of it down the straightaways, but you want the car to handle. There's four corners in the racetrack. There's only two straightaways. So the big thing is to go around the corners, and when we do accelerate in the, in the corners, you don't want to use the brakes anymore because you want your brakes at the end of the race as much as you can. So you, you pretty well sit back in a sense, but with the cars that are here today, I don't know how far we're going to be able to sit back. We've got to stay on the same lap. There's no toys about that. One of the interesting aspects of this race is what kind of an advantage the hometown runners might have as opposed to those drivers who are at this speedway for the first time today. One of the hometown favorites to possibly win the race is the defending points champion here at Checker Flag Motor Speedway, Len Kuvion, the driver of number 52. Kuvion last year ran away with the season's points title. He's leading it again here in the summer of 86. Len, is there any advantage to be had by running on this track week in, week out, as opposed to the guys seeing this surface the first time today? Well, I feel there should be. Uh, you know, like, like you say, when we run here every week, we know what gear to run, and uh, we, we're hooked up for this track every week, and uh, we keep working with the car to make it better every week on this track, where other guys from out of town come in and, uh, you know, they got to start from scratch pretty well. You're one of the hardest runners. Is it going to take a premium on the brakes today, breaking hard into the turns for 100 laps? Oh, definitely. Uh, whoever gets out in front in this race is going to try running away with it. Uh, and it looks like there's a lot of competitors down uh, from out of town in that, and you can guarantee that they're definitely going to be running strong. For the fastest sportsman cars in North America. Gentlemen, start your engines. The cry of start your engines has been given, and we're all set to go racing. And on the pole, it will be the number 17 car of Jack Reynolds, and that despite, of course, Bob, the fact that Jack Monahan had the fastest qualifying time. Jack was very fortunate in qualifying today as he rolled the number three on the dice, so he only has to start back inside the second row. Four cars at the front, as a matter of fact, the six cars at the front are so, so closely matched that it will be a heck of a first couple of laps as they all try to get out there in front. John Reynolds from Port Alma, Ontario in a 1986 Monte Carlo. And right beside him will be Don Malat, car number 78 in an 86 Lincoln. Starter John McLean looking the field over. The pace car makes its way up and to the exit. Starter John McLean, it's all in your hands now as he looks the field over. And the green flag is out, and we're racing in this 1986 Pulse Canadian International Freedom Festival 100. 24 cars going through cleanly, turns one and two, and now down the backstretch. And it is car John Reynolds in number 17 in his 86 Monte Carlo. Side by side, still bunched. Three now down the front chute, three abreast. Jack Monahan trying the inside line, cut off by John Reynolds. You know, they have a long way to go. You'd think they'd hold back a little bit. It's funny, you know, we talk about it all the time. Nobody holds back in a stock car. They race for the front right from the beginning, and that's why we have body contact. Monahan and Kuvion, and Kuvion hitting the infield just a bit, but straightening it out. So it remains John Reynolds in first spot, Jack Monahan in second, Len Kuvion in third. Alan Turner in the blue and white number two car moves up to fourth spot. Most of these cars, look at Monahan now, blow by and takes the lead going three. Here they come out of turn four, and it is your new leader, Jack Monahan, the fastest qualifier. Jack is showing why he was the fastest qualifier in that turn three. 
pass on lap number three. Jack Monahan, the 49-year-old driver out of Heron, Ontario, in his 1986 Ford Thunderbird. making the move on John Reynolds in a battle for second and third and Cuvion has him and Turner gets by as well so it is Monaghan, Cuvion, Turner and Don Malat has now moved up into fourth spot as John Reynolds the pole sitter drops back to fifth and Lincoln's here. They prim primarily are what, Chevrolet engines? Most of the engines here today are Chevrolets with the exception of the Don Malak car, which is a Ford-powered Ford, and the Rob Young car, which is a Ford-powered Ford. Other than that, they're all small block Chevrolet powered. Are they just the dominant engine right now in this type of sportsman class? In sportsman racing, it's much less expensive to build a higher horsepower Chevrolet engine as there are so many of them available and so many parts available for the cars. And Jack Monahan, quickly as we are on lap number nine, has lap number 57. Jamie Thurby of Windsor and his 85 Monte Carlo. So quickly the field moving up, spreading itself out, and Monahan passing slower traffic already. Nearly gets tangled up there in turn one with Bob LeClaire. But Monahan leading the pack, going down the back stretch with Len Kuvion in second spot. Alan Turner in third, and the 78 car of Don Malat in fourth. Vic, one of the dangers of running on a short track of three-eighths of a mile is the fact that you get into traffic constantly. You're always battling the traffic from about the 10th lap on in a 100-lap race. Jack Monahan, the 49-year-old, has been racing at the checker flag ever since it opened. And the battle now for second place. You see Kuby on the number 52 car right up on the bumper of Monahan. Len Kuvion challenging now down the back stretch. What a battle they've got going. They are really in there tight, and right behind them, the number two car of Alan Turner as well. Now but the battle of, is definitely for the front. What kind of grooves do you have here at the checker flag? They're mostly staying up top, it looks like. The fast way around is that higher groove, but they can run two and three wide through here as oh, Kuvion. Kuvion tries to put a nose in behind that left rear fender of Monaghan and gets closed down. Monahan seems to have that top end power, that straightaway power. This is the battle for third spot, the number two car of Alan Turner. And the 78 car of Don Malat sticking it right in there as well as even the two leaders cannot pull out much on the second and third place cars. Kuvion now has Monahan as he gets trapped behind some slower traffic. Joe Rizek holding up Monaghan, and he's forced to go to the inside, and your new leader is Len Kuvion. Car number 99. Cup number 90, 89. Jack Kaufman of London, Ontario, in 95-85. Monte Carlo spins between, between turns three and four, and the yellow flag, the starter, John McLean, has pulled it quickly. bring everybody down to safer speed. And with a report now from the pits, here is Frank Salee. Well, Vic and Bob, this first story of retirement from here in the pits today, car number 21, Rob Young. Rob, why did you go out? Well, the oil temperature started coming up, and when you get, when oil temperature gets to about 260 degrees, you got problems, you're gonna burn the bearings up in the motor. So the oil temperature went up to about 280, and I figured I'd better bring her in. The water temperature was 240, and it was only 10 laps into the race, and it was a 100-lap race, and I wouldn't have made it 
you know, uh, and we get money for start for taking the green flag, and I wouldn't have got any more money going a distance and blowing the motor up. I would have lost money. So I'm, uh, I brought it in, and we'll come back next week and try and do a little better. Are the guys out there setting two tour at a pace in the early going? I don't think so. There's a lot of cars out there that are pretty, uh, pretty loose through the turns, and the uh, uh, track seems a little dirty. My car was a little loose the first couple of laps, but it started hooking up. And I was just going to sit back and let them guys fight it out, and hopefully I would have been there at the end. But it didn't work out for me. <laughs> One more lap under the caution, says John McLean, with the white and yellow flags. And we'll be racing. The wind has started to pick up just a bit. It's become a little bit overcast. Don't think there is much threat of rain, but how will that wind affect some of these cars? They're pretty stable. It's not going to hurt them too much. It's not like on the big tracks where the wind will move them around all over the place. What it may do is give them a little more spoiler downforce. And we're back to racing here at the 1986 Molson Canadian International Freedom Festival 100, and your leader continues to be Len Kuvioff. In the 52 car, Jack Monahan is second. Alan Turner is third as they round three, head into four, and come down into the front chute, having completed 17 laps. That caution period has sure bunched up the front part of this pack as we now have racing all the way through the front. Jack Monahan, about a half a car length behind Cuvion as they come through turn four and down the front chute one more time. But it really takes no more than maybe half a dozen laps before those front runners catch up with the stragglers at the back. And it's quickly a traffic jam up there. Then it's all over again. We have to, they have to come through the traffic. So it'll, it'll only be a matter of a few more laps and they'll be right back into the slower traffic at the back. Len Cuvion. Monaghan. And Don Millat, the top four runners here, as we've now completed 20 laps. And Don Millat trying to make a move on Alan Turner. There you see the battle right there. That's Turner in the blue and white car. Millat in the number 78 trying the inside line as they go down that back stretch. And Turner turns it on. And Holds the outside line, but look at Malat come through now on the inside of turn four and down the stretch. Malat's car seems to be the better, and he's got third place now and better handling in the corners. One of the things is that Alan Turner comes from Barrie, Ontario, a long way away from here, and Don Malat is a local favorite. He drives this racetrack every Saturday night, so he's had all the chances to get his race car handling the best at any portion of this racetrack. Your leader continues to be Len Cuvion, and once again, they've started to catch up with the slower traffic, already passing some of the slower cars, like Jamie Thulbury of Windsor, Ontario. And Cuvion now has opened up, oh, it looks to be Maybe a five to six car lead over Jack Monahan. But look at the traffic jam in front of him right now. Don Malott in a 78 car appears to be pulling up on Jack Monahan as they're coming into traffic and the leader's in trouble. Oh, Cuvion gets tapped and look out as it's the number 04 car of Andy Farr that gets sideways down that backstretch and Cuvion had a little tap with Andy Farr, went into the infield, but regained it. But he has now dropped back to third spot, regained enough control, but he lost a couple of spots as he got tangled again with some of that slower traffic. The slower traffic did it to him as he got past. Yellow caution flag out quickly from the starter, John McLean. Despite the, despite the spin, there's the leader again. Len Cuvion, the judges awarding him first place because the little spin with Andy Farr in the 04 car was not his fault. And also we must go back one full lap in short track stock car racing and that put him back on. And the green flag is out and we're racing again here at the Checker Flag Motor Speedway in Windsor, Ontario. 
Huvion continues to lead Monahan and Malik down the back stretch into three and four. Kuvion's car is extremely loose in that turn, and Jack Monahan pulled right up on him again. Kuvion may have something going bad in that car. But you'd have to say right now, they are indeed the three fastest cars in this field. Yes, they are. They are definitely three of the fastest, or three of the fastest cars around as Malat gets underneath Monahan a little bit. Gave a little bit of a tap. Kuvion leads down through turn one, through two, and down the back stretch. There's your leader, Len Cuvion. Cuvion, Monahan, Malat. Fourth place belongs to John Reynolds, the pole sitter, when this all began 28 laps ago. And Malat looking for the inside line by Monahan down the front straight. Couldn't find it. Now he may have it. Now he may have it as they go down the back stretch. There's your leader, Len Cuvion. The battle for second and third, though. That's it right there. Malat getting the inside line. Malat inside line. Does he have Monahan as they head down the back stretch? Side-by-side -side racing as they go into the turn. Malat seems to be going around the corner a little better, but Jack Monahan definitely has higher straightaway speeds. This could be the battle of the afternoon. There's Cuvion, there's Malat. He's got about a half a car on him. Down the back stretch into turn three. Malat trying to hold on to that inside. He makes the pass. And he's Monahan. got him. So Don Malat, the 38-year-old from Windsor in the 1986 Lincoln, has taken over second spot as he passes Jack Monahan. And Len Cuvion getting himself out of the battle, stretching his lead now. Once again, Kubion coming up on the slower cars, and he starts to go by Jamie Thurlby. Quickly by, and putting some space between himself and the second place car of Don Malat. Getting it down into turn number one with Don Malat right on his tail. Jack Monahan in third spot. There's the battle, first and second. The number 52 car of Len Cuvion. This type of racing you, it's interesting to watch them sometimes juggle and he'll try and stick a nose in none behind him and maybe give him a little bit of nudge. I mean, this isn't unlike bumper cars at times. We do get into a little bit of contact as we see it's very close right there. A lot right now is kind of feeling Kuvion out and trying to figure out which lane to take to pass him, if indeed he does have enough power in that Lincoln 2 pass him. They are running as close as the 1-2 cars have run all day right now. I'm quite sure Len Kuvion has his hands full. Len Kuvion trying to hold off Don Malak. As we're on to the 40th lap of this 100 lap International Freedom Festival. belongs to Jack Monahan, and it is the pole sitter, John Reynolds, alone in fourth. Cuvion, though, doing a good job of holding it off. He does, he seems to corner a lot better. There are two different distinct type of cars there. Cuvion seems to have the better cornering speed, while uh, Malat seems to be the better down the straight. Well, Len's car is a tad loose, which means it's, it's sliding through the turns and he's right on it all the time. It gives him a little bit faster line coming out of the turn. Don Malat in second spot. Jack Monahan is in third. And the number 11 car of Bob Merrifield in an 86 Lincoln is now in fourth. So 
Lincolns running two and four. Hot Rod Lincolns. Hot Rod Lincolns for sure. Anything but stock Lincolns, but they still are stock cars with stock car bodies on them. Don Willett, about a half car length behind Len Cuvillon. Is he content to stay there? Or will he try to make a move early with still more than half a race to go? I think he's going to feel Len out. I think he's going to watch him, tuck right in behind him, give him fits, so to speak. Let him know that he's always there. But I think he'll hold back for a little while until he has the, the most opportune moment to go by him. You don't want to make a mistake that could potentially cost you as much money as you could lose by not not finishing this particular event. And there's the way they go through turn one, one, two, Kubi on the lat. And the rest of the field stringing out. There's your number three car. And in third place, that is Jack Monahan, zero three. Once again, they're starting to lap slower traffic and that's been a problem. now trying starting to stretch it out just a bit as he opens it up to maybe three or four car lengths over Don Millat. Don Millat, the second place driver, 38 years old, from Windsor. He's been a five-time season champion, quite the veteran driver. Yes, he has. He's been around this racetrack a number of laps. He was racing here when it was still a dirt track in the early 70s and late 60s. So he's been here a long, long time and knows his way around this racetrack. Kuvion continues to lead. Valat Monahan is in third. Bob Merrifield is in fourth spot. we come to the halfway mark 50 laps have now been completed of this Molson Canadian International Freedom Festival 100 and your leader continues to be Len Cuvion with Don Millat in second spot Jack Monahan in third and they've stretched the lead now over the fourth place car of Bob Merrifield but it really looks like those three are going to be the three that battle it out for top prize in a lot of racing situations here at Checker Flag, it is those three that are doing it. Slower traffic though, and it's Bob LeClaire in the number 10 car in the way, but he courteously drops down to the inside and lets Kuvion Malat scoot on by. Jack is now into an open section of the track, but we have a race here at the front. Well, Kuvion trying the inside line, trying to get by the slower car. That's number 72, Dan Delisle of Lukerville. And again, a spin there. Number 99, John Sawatsky loses it in turn two, and the yellow flag has come out. And that just saved Dan Delisle from going down a lap, as he will now be able to go back past Cuvion like he did, the, like Cuvion did in the earlier spin, and go all the way around to the back of the pack. And while we're under this yellow caution flag, let's take a break, and we'll return with more of the Freedom Festival 100. The green flag is out, and here we go, and Len Cuvion leads them again past the starting line and down into turn one. Don Millat, number two, Jack Monahan three, and it's been that way one, two, three for a long time. Yeah, for virtually the last 25 or 30 laps, we've been running in this same formation, but it's still close. Cuvion on that restart was very, very loose coming off of turn number four. I thought maybe Malat would get underneath him, but it didn't happen. There's the battle for second and third. Don Malat in the 78 car. Jack Monahan in 03, and those two men, very experienced drivers. And who knows, maybe they know something the younger Cuvion doesn't. Well, Cuvion does know the fast way around this racetrack. He's a younger man, but he has definitely been racing a long time, but you still can't take and away from the veterans who have years and years of experience on this track as Kuvion makes a mistake and gets very loose. Oh, and Don Millat 
right there, ready to pounce on any mistake. And number 57 gets a little snaky going down the front straight, and he regains it. Number 57, Jamie Thurlby of Windsor, Ontario, and the yellow flag is out again. Glenn Cuvion has outdone himself. On lap 68, he has set a new track record for a race lap, 18.18 seconds. It remains a two-man battle. Glenn Cuvion in car 52, Don Mallott in car 78. Here's the conclusion of the call of the race with Vic and Bob. Glenn Cuvion, Don Mallott, and Jack Monahan. One, two, three as they go down, out of two, and down the back stretch. Those are your leaders, Cuvion, Malat. And here's the battle for third and fourth. Monaghan has developed some sort of handling problem. The car has a definite push, and Merrifield's been able to take advantage of that and get under the Metro Catering Thunderbird on a couple of occasions. There's Monaghan, the 0-3. Merrifield, the 11 car, and he's got his nose in behind the left rear fender, and now the question is, can he hold on and push him out enough to get by? See, when Jack goes into the turn, he pushes way up high on the groove, gives Merrifield a chance to go down. That is a handling problem with that 0-3 car. There's your leader, Len Cuvion. Still now by about three or four car lengths over number 78, Don Millat. And Monaghan has regained his form, and he's stretched his lead a little bit now on Merrifield in that battle for third and fourth. And once again, the slower traffic possibly possibly a problem for the leaders Cuvion and Malak as they go to the outside Cuvion by cleanly and Malak blows on by as well and there's the battle for third and fourth Merrifield trying the inside line oh and a problem Monaghan you're right look at this this is almost like he died there the star is pushing very very badly but this what might save Monaghan right now is that traffic. Merrifield's got him, but he's down on the inside. They may have to go three wide up the backstretch. Oh, look at this. Three wide is right in Merrifield, and Monaghan had to give up the groove. The first and second place cars, and the number 11 in third spot of Merrifield. Those two leaders have opened up a considerable lead on the rest of the field, but Nobody is running away at the front as the two of them are in one heck of a dogfight. The slower traffic being asked to move over by starter John McLean. Let the leaders race, and they sure are. Len Cuvio hanging on to the lead with Don Malak right on his tail. In third spot, Jack Monahan in the 03 car is fourth. And the field now has been thinned to just 14 cars from the starting 24. I really like the way Cuvion can handle those corners. Cuvion goes through it right flat out most of the time. But you'll notice if you watch very closely that the line that Cuvion takes sometimes isn't the same one every lap, where Millard or Monaghan will virtually run the same line unless there's a car in their way every lap. There's your second place car. 38-year-old Don Millard in his 1986 Lincoln. Chasing the leader, Len Cuvion, in his Thunderbird. Bob Merrifield and another Lincoln is in third spot. And Jack Monahan in a Ford Thunderbird. So we have Thunderbird. We have a Lincoln sandwich. The cars seem to be so evenly matched that unless one of them makes a bobble, the other one can't pass them. Malak's still right there, though. Cuvion hasn't won this one yet, as he's still got seven laps to go. First place, number 52, Len Cuvion, 78, Don Millat, second place. The duel for the top. Monaghan slipping under for the third position in the backstretch as they go Getting up. Getting by Merrifield. 
as they go too wide through turn three, turn four. And it is, Jack Monahan has got him for third spot. And there's the battle for the lead, number 52 and 78. Just four laps to go now, as then Gouvillon holds on. And maybe there's still something left in Mr. Monaghan's car, the third place car. Maybe he can come up and make it a three-way battle. He is. He seems to be gaining on the Malak car. I believe maybe Kubia and Malak have both slowed down just slightly at this point. Although they wouldn't do it intentionally, perhaps their cars aren't working quite as well. This could be a situation oh. here with that lapped car. Bob LeClaire, the slower car, getting in his way, but then ducking down inside and letting them by. Malat has two laps left to do it. And Kubio, there is Jack Monahan. Can he make it a three-car race? Right now, he sits alone in third spot. The white flag is out. One lap to go in this International Freedom Festival 100. All the stops are out at this point. There's On no left, turning trying back. to catch up. The checkered flag is in the hands of John McLean. And your winner is number 52. It is Len Cuvion, the 28-year-old from Windsor, as he wins the 1986 Molson Canadian International Freedom Festival 100. And he holds off the challenge of Don Mallet. Uh, third place. It is the 03 car with Jack Monahan as the rest of the cars come by the starting stand. But a great race run by Len Cuvion. You can't say anything but because he's just held off challenge after challenge. Considering all the yellow flags where the field was able to bunch up, he did extremely well. And when we come back, we will talk to the winning driver of this 1986 International Freedom Festival, Mr. Len Cuvion. Stay with us. Len Kuvion, Len leading the last 83 laps. Ever a nervous time on the front end? Well, the whole race was, uh, I was pretty well nervous when I got out front, uh, especially when I seen Don Malott uh, start sticking his nose in there a few times. Uh, you run uh, 83 laps in the lead, well, <laughs> that's not easy done, you know, so. You never made a mistake. It was all your way, your machine seemed to be superior. Yeah, the car worked good for the whole race. Uh, There's a couple times, like with uh, lap traffic there on the back stretch, I got tangled up in the infield, and I was wondering what was going to happen there. I was just hoping we didn't come out with a flat tire. Len, a worthy champion, and congratulations on a super mistake-free effort. Okay, thank you, Frank. So it's been quite the day for Len Cuvion as he wins the first International Freedom Festival 100, and you've really got to hand it to the young man. He took the lead on the 17th lap and held it despite numerous cautions, which allowed the rest of the field to catch up. At times, he looked a little loose, but, man, he can drive. He can sure drive, and we're very proud of him. We're glad that he won it, and uh, we look forward to running a lot more big shows with him in it. Bob, thank you very much. Frank Salif, come in here and join us. Thank you very much for handling the pits for us today. On behalf of Frank Salif, Bob Robinson, I'm Vic Rauter, and thank you, and goodbye. We certainly hope that you enjoyed the 1986 Molson Canadian International Freedom Festival 100 from the Checker Flag Motor Speedway in Windsor, Ontario.